Hello, everybody. My name is John Mark Johnson, Jr., and I am the host of Reform GGA. And today I'm going to be trying to respond to a question that I received some time back. I don't respond to questions very quickly at all. I apologize for that, and sometimes it goes on for so long that the person who asked the question will wind up deleting it, or YouTube uh, will automatically delete it after it gets held for uh, such a long period. It's like two months or something like that. If a question goes unanswered for more than two months or gets held for more than two months, a comment gets held for more than two months, uh, YouTube automatically deletes it and then it's gone and I have no idea what it was. Uh, and this is one of those cases that was there for too long and so the comment wind up getting deleted. So I'm going to be responding to this uh, questioner from memory as best I can remember the question. And the question was basically like this. If you had to choose between the Palmetto State Armory KS-47, which I have here, and their AKP, which I do not have, which one would you choose and why? Excuse me. Um, now, the fact that I have currently a KS-47 and I used to own an AKP, but do not currently own an AKP, should tell you pretty much which one I'm, I'm going to wind up picking. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the reasoning for my case is necessarily going to apply to you. So I'm going to back up just a little bit and um, discuss the, the general, a more general issue uh, right off the bat. And that is that I would suggest that before you look into getting a rifle caliber pistol, uh, or something that's rifle cal caliber with a fairly short barrel, I would suggest that you think long and hard about that decision as to whether or not that's really what is going to best suit your needs. Uh, the reason why I say that is because these rifle caliber pistols, while they do have some advantages that we'll wind up talking about, they also have some significant disadvantages. Uh, one of them is that the ammunition can be fairly expensive or it can be relatively cheap. In the case of the, the KS-47, it shoots 7.62x39 ammunition, which is relatively cheap ammunition. So it's good to go that way, but a lot of the other AR-type pistols that are out there shoot 5.56, and 5.56 is kind of spendy right now. So one of the issues with these kinds of guns can be ammunition. Another issue with them is that since you're firing uh, rifle rounds out of them out of fairly short barrels, you're going to get a lot of unburnt, unburnt powder, and that means that there's going to be a lot of flash and bang with these guns. And in the case of 7.62x39 guns, that is exacerbated by the fact that a lot of those ammunition types, especially in the bulk ammunition, do not have any flash retardants in them, to, at least not to speak of, and so they tend to be produce a lot of flash out of short barrels, um, which can be kind of fun and all that, but uh, after a while it does become a little bit wearisome to you and to anyone at the range who is going to be next to you. Um, and then also, if you're thinking about using this for some kind of a, a serious you know, self-defense type application, um, possibly, say, as a, a, a bedside gun, something that you would use uh, ostensibly in a closed environment like a room or an apartment, um, extra flash and bang is not really a good thing. They are loud to begin with outdoors. Uh, you stick them in a confined space like a typical room or apartment or something like that and it's they're going to be extremely loud and the, there's a very high probability that if you have to use these things in a defensive manner, you're probably not going to have time or be overly concerned about getting ear protection on. And granted, your concerns would that would probably not be highest on the, the hierarchy of needs right then. If your life is in danger, hearing to a certain extent might be able to wait, but once you start firing this thing, your, your hearing is definitely going to be compromised, and that is something to, to think about. Um, it's uh, definitely going to be a, a disadvantage that way. Another issue with these kinds of guns in general is that since they are rifle caliber guns, the operating mechanism uh, the operating principle, uh, but usually the mechanism too, is going to be a bit more complicated. They're just mechanically more complex guns. And because they're mechanically more complex, that means that they're usually going to be a little bit more involved to keep in good repair. 
Now, if you're the kind of person who takes these, uh, takes any gun that you have and you go off and uh, fire a, a box or two of ammunition to make sure that the thing runs and then you set it up by your bedside and that's where you leave it for the rest of the time, eh, keeping it running and maintenance and those kinds of things are not going to be a big issue because you're not going to really be putting a lot of wear and tear on the gun. Uh, but there's a number of people that are not like that and to a certain extent I would applaud them. Uh, the gun that you're best with is the one that you train with, and the gun can have all the nice, uh, wonderful bells and whistles on it, but if you don't know how to use it in the moments, if it isn't basically automatic to you to, to grab the weapon and go to work with it because you've just done it so many times that it's natural for you, um, all the extra bells and whistles and anything that you might want to attach to it aren't going to do you any good if you're not familiar with it. And so regular training is a good thing. The problem though, like I said, with these more mechanically complex guns is that that means more maintenance. There's more things that can break, there's more things that are going to need to be repaired, hopefully preemptively repaired. Um, it's just going to be a bit more involved to keep them going. And then another general issue uh, that I would argue applies especially to PSA guns, to Palmetto State Armory guns, uh, but it applies to the entire genre, is that they tend to be more finicky than their full-size counterparts. That doesn't necessarily mean that every single short barrel uh, rifle caliber uh, gun that is out there is just going to be horribly unreliable or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but what I'm saying is that they are, as a category, less reliable than their full-length counterparts, and that has to do with the length of the gas tube, uh, primarily. Uh, whenever you shorten up the gas system on these guns, it tends to show itself a little bit more in ARs in some ways, but you get similar things that go on with AKs and other kinds of designs as well. Uh, maybe not to the same extent in the same way, but uh, the same principle applies that whenever you shorten up a system that was designed for to be X long and you take it and you shorten it up, you're going to wind up having to make uh, choices on what you keep and lose in terms of uh, reliability and those kinds of things. Sometimes the guns become very ammo sensitive. You simply cannot run certain types of ammunition with them uh, just because they don't generate enough port pressure to be a, uh, to reliably cycle the action. Um, all kinds of things that you wind up having to do to them to keep them running well and running smooth. It might involve putting an adjustable gas block in, or in the case of an A-carry variant, it might be an adjustable gas piston. Um, all kinds of things that you have to do in order to kind of overcome the innate uh, finickiness of the system. It doesn't mean that every short barrel gun that is out there that is rifle caliber is necessarily going to be unreliable. It just means that there's going to have to be more things that go into making it reliable and a lot more ways of that can go wrong that will make it unreliable. Um, and because of that, I would heavily suggest uh, that unless you explicitly have a need for uh, an actual rifle round in some way, either you're looking for uh, the greater muzzle energy and or range uh, that that would provide to you, that you'd probably be better suited to um, better, uh, you, we'll just say you'll be happier with something like this. This is a CZ Scorpion Evo 3S1. Uh, this is, of course, the pistol version of it. It is relatively short and compact. It has a folding brace on it that makes it that much more compact. Um, you can, of course, put a light on the side. As you can see, I already have a red dot on there. And depending on the red dot that you get, it will co they can, depending on the red dot you get, they can co-witness with the sights that are already on it. Um, this one has a battery tray on the bottom of the red dot, and so it doesn't co-witness uh, co very well. It's it's technically co-witness, but not quite, but not really functionally. Um, ones that have battery trays on the side will co-witness a little bit better, um, but um, you still have irons there if you need it. Like I said, you can put a light on there, and uh, I have a light that I basically transfer from uh, gun to gun whenever I, I need it on that gun. That's why it's not on this one right now because it's on my home defense gun right now, doing its its duty. So I don't have it right here to show. Um, but very, very, very functional gun, and it's also uh, very mechanically uh, simple, uh, very, very mechanically simple. There is a bolt, there is a recoil spring and rod, there's the a normal uh, 
uh, extractor, ejector, those kinds of things, but nothing at all related to a gas system because there is no gas system in the gun. It's just straight blowback. And because of that, it is a very simple gun and it's also very simple to maintain. Uh, the procedure for taking it apart is pretty simple. You lock back the bolt on this particular model, not all pistol caliber pistols large pistols in this case, are going to be exactly the same, but uh, on this particular model it is very simple. Um, pull out the pin, take out uh, the trigger pack and magwell, and then inside you have uh, the bolt and recoil assembly. And that's it, that's full disassembly. Cleaning it is basically wiping it out pulling a boar snake through the barrel a few times with cleaner on it, and then you're pretty much good to go. And it assembles that easily. They're not complicated guns. They're very easy to run. Uh, they also are safer in that pistol caliber rounds simply do not generate as much energy as rifle caliber rounds do, and so if something goes wrong, uh, there's much le you're much less likely to injure yourself in a bad way. I'm talking specifically about uh, out, of ba out of battery detonations and bore obstructions and things like that. They can happen with any gun. Um, as we recently saw, um, they can even happen with 50 BMG. Um, sorry, Scott from Kentucky Ballistics, but you've now kind of become a target example for everyone. And that... Um, when something that big and powerful explodes, it causes a lot of damage, like life-threatening damage. And if something like this explodes, technically you could get injured from it, and some of those injuries could be fairly severe. But frankly, I've not known anyone to die, or even come close to dying, from a PC3, that's what I'm going to call my pistol caliber gun with some kind of third point of contact. I've never known any uh, case in which someone died or even came close to dying from a PC3 exploding on them. It's First of all, it's rare in the first place if you have a good quality gun, but there's just so little energy in a pistol round compared to a rifle round that the danger of that kind of thing happening to you is very, 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 very slim. Another people uh, thing that people would be concerned about with something like this, okay, yes, it's easier to maintain, we get this, that, yes, it's safer, but is it going to do the job? Well, if you look at the Greg Elephant study on stopping power, what he found is that when it comes to stopping someone, it usually takes two or three pistol rounds to the head or torso to stop someone. And he found that with rifle rounds, it usually takes one or two rounds to the head or torso to stop someone. So are they weaker? Yes, by roughly one round. Seriously. One to two rounds with a rifle versus two to three with a pistol caliber gun. Uh, the advantage of having a PC3, though, something with a third point of contact, is that you can place those rounds much more accurately than you could with, say, a regular pistol. And in the context of a self-defense situation, you also have the added benefits of reduced flash and bang because it's only pistol caliber and not rifle caliber. So your hearing is much more likely to be intact and during and throughout the encounter, which means you're not going to have great perception loss. You're going to be that much more aware of your surroundings, possible uh, deal with uh, possible multiple assailants better, multiple attackers have better because you're going to be more aware of what's going on around you, etc., etc. There's lots of benefits to it and not nearly as many losses as people think. The only real disadvantage that PC3s have is the simple fact that their range is not nearly what a rifle round uh, can provide. Um, are they less powerful? Yes. Um, uh, but that usually isn't a big thing in a, in a self-defense encounter. Like I said, it's in the moments of what is necessary to stop a, an attacker, there's only like one round difference, and as long as you, you know, have you know, four or more rounds in the magazine, you technically have enough at least for one assailant, as long as you can place the rounds accurately enough. And lots of these come with fairly high capacity magazines, so that shouldn't be an issue. Unless you're in California, we mourn for you. That's a different story. Um, but uh, by and large, not a whole lot of losses, except when it comes to the issue of range. And that is what led me to uh, not carry this thing as my uh, bedside traveling bedside gun anymore. For a long time, this thing was it. Uh, this or very comparable PC3s. Um, 
that's kind of always what I stuck with just because they're so much simpler and safer um, and also they, they use the same ammunition that my handgun does my, my typical concealed carry handgun does and so having and being able to just put one box of ammunition in the suitcase and be able to feed uh, all, every gun that I bring with me out of that same box is frankly really handy um, all of that was very appealing until I decided to add an extra requirement to my uh, my bedside gun and frankly I'm thinking about changing this requirement because um, overall I'm not sure that I've been overly happy with uh, the total results but the requirement uh, that I decided to add is that I wanted to have a gun that could effectively take down mediumish sized game like deer at 200 yards well the PC3s like the CZ Scorpion that I just showed you are technically capable of taking down game like hogs and deer and things like that uh, but it's very difficult to get effective hits um, that would really do enough damage to humanely take down the animal outside of about 50 yards. It can certainly be done inside of that, but outside of 50 yards, you really start pushing the, the bounds of what is really um, ethical. And if you get too far out, like past 100 yards, um, you start getting into the realm of whether or not you're actually going to hit anything in uh, the, the place that you'd want to hit to even have something that would actually do the job of killing the animal instead of just causing it great pain for a while. Um, so yeah, once you get into that requirement of I want to be able to take on medium sized game, clear out to 200 yards, pistol calibers start to, to wane just because there there is a, a, starting out there's less energy to start with, but especially once you start traveling away from the muzzle, Pistol rounds are frankly just not very aerodynamic. Uh, they have a very poor ballistic coefficient, most of them, and so they lose a lot of steam uh, pretty quickly. Like I said, 50 yards is pushing it for a, a lot of the PC3s in terms of being able to do what you would want to do to a, to a medium-sized game animal. And that is where we get into the KS-47 and why it's a part of my kids. Now, I have owned uh, an AKP before, and that's basically what we're comparing here. And um, I don't have an AKP with me, but I do have the AKP's smaller brother, if you will. This is the AKV, uh, V instead of AKP, V as in Veronica. And um, this gun is a 9mm uh, gun instead of the 7.62 uh, by 39 that the AKP is, uh, but still very similar feature set and very similar way that they arrange things, so it's useful at least for those purposes. And I did have an AKP at the time that I was considering doing this upgrade to my traveling bedside gun, something that would be 200 yard capable. And this type of gun in 7.62 by 39, of course, um, certainly could get the job done in terms of range. However, um, there was a problem with accuracy that I encountered, and that is that these guns um, have a hinge uh, top cover. And that hinge top cover is what, of course, you can see the, mount to, uh, the optic mounts to. And that is the, the mounting option. And these top covers, uh, I have found loosen up over time with both this AKV uh, and the AKP that I had a while back. Uh, they loosen up. We'll see if I can be quiet enough for you to hear. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that, but there is a slight wobble that is indeed audible. And what that means is that the optic, it doesn't so much lose zero as it never had a zero to begin with. Uh, there's just it wobbles and so there's kind of a range of places that it can be pointing at at any given time now for the most part it's it's close enough for fairly close in stuff and in this nine millimeter version you know I don't really expect uh, it to be to do anything with it past 50 yards anyways and so the amount of wobble that is there isn't really significant enough to worry about inside of 50 yards it's perfectly adequate to the task. But if I'm talking about the AKP in 762 by 39, well, that I would expect to be useful, clear out to 200 yards. But with that wobble, um, it's not. Now, there are some people online who have said, oh, it, it's uh, perfectly sufficient, it holds as zero just fine, it's, it's good to go. Well, 
if you're shooting at relatively close ranges, you're probably not going to notice a difference. And if you're using uh, some of the, the cheap bulk ammunition, you might not notice the, uh, enough of a difference to make a difference, as one um, YouTuber uh, likes to say. Uh, but in my experience, if you shoot enough rounds to these guns, either the, the AKV or the AKP that we're really comparing here, if you shoot enough rounds, eventually that piece will start to loosen up and it will start to wobble and you're going to get some uh, movement on your optic, which means you're not going to have a consistent zero anymore and taking those longer shots is going to be a lot more difficult. So that alone would ruin an AKP or an AKV, uh, but would ruin the AKP, the 7.62 uh, by 39 version of this gun that Palmetto sells, uh, from being in the rate uh, running for what I wanted to do just because while the cartridge might technically be able of doing what it needs to do at that distance, my ability to actually connect successfully is going to be greatly limited. Uh, just because the optic is not going to be effective enough to do what I need it to do. It's just not going to hold zero properly, so that's one reason why not. Uh, another problem that I had uh, with my particular problem is that these guns, the AKV and the AKP, both of them, even when uh, I fold the brace, uh, and the AKP that I had, by the way, did not have a folding uh, brace. I could have got a folding brace for it if I wanted to. Uh, but even without any brace whatsoever, they were simply too big to fit into my uh, travel uh, case. And yes, I could uh, take this uh, muzzle device off. By the way, this muzzle device is not one uh, that Palmetto State Armory sells that I got separately. Um, yes, even with taking that off, it still wouldn't fit in my travel case. So that was two strikes against it. One, it didn't hold zero. And two, even when you either have no brace or take off the brace, take off the muzzle device, all that stuff, it still wouldn't fit in my travel case. So it was too big and uh, it wasn't accurate enough for the task. Well, that kind of limits things down. Another issue that I had with it is that, and this has been a running theme with all of my Palmetto State Armory guns to one extent or another, is that every single one of them, without fail, has always had some kind of an issue that I had to work on. And I don't greatly mind that. It's kind of the, the fun of uh, guns for me to a certain extent is to work on things and get them better, uh, at least if it's something that I can work on and can make better. Um, but nonetheless, that was an issue. And while it wasn't a huge issue for me, it will be for other people. If you're planning on using these guns for self-defense, a gun that you have to fix out of the box or perhaps send back out, uh, as soon as you get it, mm, kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a gun for self-defense if you don't actually have the gun for self-defense, you know? Um, not so great that way. And the AKP that I had, and there are still videos up on the channel uh, of the AKP, uh, the thing was not, and it was not straight. I'm not saying that it didn't shoot straight. The, uh, the wobble in the... Uh, in the in the hinge dust cover saw to it that it didn't shoot straight at least at great distances uh, but the thing itself was not straight and because of that the uh, the piston would not go into um, the gas block uh, uh, cleanly it kind of had to be redirected in and there's also all kinds of other little things that needed to be uh, fixed and tweaked on it and I actually made the mistake of putting an AK um, enhanced trigger in it, the ALG trigger in it, and that created problems down the line because the ALG trigger hammer is considerably harder uh, than the metal that um, PSA uses on their bolt carrier. And so that really hard hammer uh, smacking the end of the bolt carrier all the time deformed it enough that it actually slowed uh, the bolt carrier down and started causing stove pipes and whatnot. And that's something that can be remedied. The whole issue of it being out of straight can be remedied. The, the most effective solution is to send it back and ask them to send you one that's straight. Um, these are all fixable problems, but there are problems that I've seen. And granted, I don't have uh, a sample size of one for the AKP, but when it's been a problem with every single gun that I've gotten from Palmetto State Armory, one to one extent or another, that one is probably the one that was worst in terms of not being straight. Um, easily the worst in terms of not being straight. But nonetheless, every single Palmetto State Armory gun that I've had has had issues to one extent or the other. So not reliable out of the box, 
can make it reliable, but not reliable out of the box. Uh, it didn't fit in the space uh, that I needed it to fit in, and it wasn't accurate enough to do the job. So, yeah, the AKP for me uh, wound up being a, a, a non-starter. And even that AKV, I have issues with it. It's uh, not exactly entirely reliable. First of all, it doesn't like the Palmetto State Armory magazines. It only likes the CZ Scorpion magazines. Um, and even then, it's not perfectly reliable. I'll still get light strikes with it. They, and you can look at the, the firing pin on it, extend it through, and the firing pin is just simply too short. It's bad, 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 bad design. Um, should not have been designed like that. It should have a little bit longer firing pin for one. And then the, the feed geometry on that particular one, I'm not saying the AKV in general, but on that particular one, the feed geometry is a little bit off. And so it won't feed from all magazines correctly. That's just Palmetto State Armory and their rather shoddy quality control. Enter the KS-47. It's another Palmetto State Armory product, so guess what? There's issues with it. And for people that have followed the channel, they know exactly what those issues are. Uh, the issue, the more general issue is that it is uh, overgassed, and that resulted in the particular issue of it breaking the extractor that it came with. Uh, my remedy for that uh, problem, which so far has held up, I haven't put a ton of rounds to it since then, uh, as many rounds as it took to break it the first time and more, but still I'm not like up to, you know, 2,000 or 3,000 rounds or something like that, nowhere near that. I'm coming up on my first thousand in total, including the, the rounds before breakage. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the original extractor broke and my solution was to get a new enhanced extractor and um, to put an H3 buffer in it so that the overgassing issue wouldn't cause as many problems. It's still overgassed. The, uh, the chamber I definitely gets opened up way too quickly because I get a bunch of uh, carbon on the uh, extracted casings. Um, those kinds of issues. There's, it's definitely still problematic, but it hasn't been manifesting itself in terms of breakages. And so that part of it has been good. And um, also, this one's uh, firing pin is a little bit out of spec. It does not like the Tula ammunition. And to be fair, Tula ammunition is usually not in spec, especially when it comes to the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The primer. Uh, the primer on Tula ammunition is uh, not seated consistently. Sometimes it'll be right at the, the end of the casing, and sometimes it'll be really deep in there. And because of that, not all guns are able to, to pierce those primers uh, successfully. Not pierce the primers, but... Uh, dent the, uh, uh, the primers uh, successfully. And this is one of those cases. It just doesn't work out with tool ammunition very well, but it seems to feed pretty much everything else just fine. Um, and this one has the advantage of actually being accurate enough to uh, make a 200 yard shot. Um, now you'll notice that my optic is at the end of the handrail and that is not something that I would recommend for the general user. I did that because that's the way that it fit in the case and my traveling case size is kind of my constraint. That was the issue with the AKP and the reason why I wouldn't use the AKP is because it was one of many reasons is it was simply too big to fit in the traveling case. This thing when I break it down, you know, pull out the pin, separate the upper and the lower, take the, the brace off and all those kinds of things. It actually does fit in the case, but only if I have the optic mounted up here, if I mount it too far back or in the middle, it just doesn't work out with the way everything else is spaced out in the case. So um, that's kind of a compromise. It's not the best way to mount an optic on a gun. I'm not necessarily saying that, uh, but it is effective enough for my uses and it's the way that makes it work for, for my uses. Um, and it is a 200 yard capable uh, gun. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I wound up going with the KS-47. Like all of my Palmetto State Armory guns, it did not run right out of the box. It needed to be fixed. It needed extra parts or whatnot. In my experience, the ARs usually are the ones that need extra parts. AKs, you can usually just file on stuff and hammer on stuff enough to get them to work. Um, but you're still going to have to do something to get them to work. So yeah, that's basically why I chose the KS-47 for my traveling bedside gun. Why I would choose this over the AKP 
is mostly just because it fits my uh, size and weight constraints uh, better and it's also the one that is accurate to, out to 200 yards. But like I said, for you, and I'm speaking generally, not just of the, the person who asked this question, but generally, unless you have a very specific reason for needing a short-barreled rifle caliber gun, I am going to say that a lot of you would probably be a lot happier with a pistol caliber gun with some kind of third point of contact. They're safer, they're easier to maintain, they're mechanically simpler and so they don't need as much maintenance to begin with. They're very easy to disassemble and clean, at least if you get the right model. I'll admit that there are some of them out there that are horrible in terms of t uh, disassembly and whatnot. Uh, what is it? The kel Sub-2000 is an absolute booger to, to take apart and reassemble and all those kinds of things. It's not great at all. But a lot of the, uh, we'll say, not as quite as budget concerned uh, versions that are out there, PC3s that are out there, pistol caliber guns with third point of contact. Uh, a lot of the other PC3s that are out there that are a little bit higher budget, they usually do come apart just fine. Uh, not nearly as many issues. And yeah, you will pay good money for it. It's not uncommon for something like this once you get it all kitted out with uh, the brace and perhaps the lights and whatever optic you want to pick, so on and so forth, to have to spend, you know, around 1500 bucks, maybe 1750 in today's uh, gun market. But at the same time, for a fully kitted out AKP or a fully kitted, uh, kitted out KS-47, you're not talking about a whole lot less. Uh, you know, a an optic and a light, so a good optic and a good light, uh, those two things alone are going to cost you probably at least $300. And those guns are already about $1,000 guns, so you're not all that far off anyways. They're all kind of in that, that same price category once you figure in all the extra doodads and whatnot. Um, the issue is just going to be, you know, what overall is going to fit your needs. And like I said, unless you actually need something uh, that only a rifle caliber can provide, I would really, 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 really suggest that you take another look at the pistol caliber options. Now, it might be an ammo cost thing. 7.62 by 39 is cheaper than 9mm, uh, especially right now. So I get that. Believe me, I get that. That's why I got into 7.62 by 39 is because it's cheaper to shoot. So that might be the concern, and that's you have to do what your budget allows. I get that. Um, but my ish, uh, but my experience with the the short barreled rifle caliber guns in general is that they are usually considerably more finicky. It's not to say that you can't get them running smoothly, but it usually takes a little bit more doing or more out of pocket extent expense to begin with one or the other. It's either an issue of time or money usually. If you buy a good gun to begin with, it's great, but that's going to cost you more. If you do the Palmetto State Armory route, where the basic components are usually pretty good, but the uh, the quality control and whatnot is usually pretty shoddy, and you're going to have to do some tweaking and some fixing later on. And there's going to be more time, but sometimes a little bit less expense. You kind of have to weigh in on what you're going to uh, do there. Uh, but in general, yeah, the short-barreled rifle uh, caliber guns, they usually are more finicky. And like I said, if something goes wrong with them, either an out-of-battery detonation or a bore obstruction or something like that, they are more dangerous. Uh, that is not a non-concern. And then, like I said, there's also more flash and bang. And if you're talking about using it as a personal defense type weapon that you might use from inside an enclosed space, like a room or apartment or whatever the case happens to be, um, that becomes a really uh, serious concern. Granted, I I get that your hearing is not going to take precedence over your very life, but if you can kind of plan ahead uh, for added situational awareness by going with something that's not going to be quite as loud and quite as deafening, that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, so those are my thoughts and opinions on the matter of KS-47 uh, versus uh, the AKP from Palmetto State Armory. I went with the KS-47 because it is the one that is accurate enough at range that also fits in my carrying case. Those are the two main reasons. In general, though, I would highly suggest that before you get a rifle caliber um, short barrel gun that you really consider whether or not a 
pistol caliber gun of similar configuration is going to do the job instead for you. Uh, just, just my personal experience with it and that I've been much happier with those and in fact there is a very good likelihood that I'm going to be going back to using my uh, CC Scorpion as my traveling bedside gun just because I'm not finding that I really need those 200 yards. Uh, it's nice to have but the situations where I need to make a 200 yard shot are just relatively minimal. Most of the time my traveling bedside gun is just that. It's a bedside gun. I literally have to make a shot from my bedside to the door of the hotel room I'm staying in. I don't need a 200 yard gun for that. And the extra finickiness and headache of that, that those guns have given me, mm, I'd rather go with something that's a lot simpler and doesn't give me any headaches. It just runs and it just works. All right. I've yammered on enough. Thank you very much for your time and attention. For those of you who are in Christ, go with God be blessed. For those of you who are not, I pray that you come to know the true Christ of history, the only genuine Savior of mankind. Amen.